Good afternoon and welcome once more to Evening Prayer. Today is Monday, the 15th of February, and our Evening Prayer today we'll be saying um, Psalms 4, 5 and 6. They can be found on page 609 of the Anglican Prayer Book. We're also reading Proverbs 27, 1 to 12, and John's Gospel, chapter 1, 1 to 18. Our evening prayer starts on page 54 of the Anglican Prayer Book. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive His Holy Word, to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask His forgiveness of our sins, and to seek His grace, that through His Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. The glory of the Lord is declared to the world. Let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips, that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. We say together, come bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you who by night stand in the house of our God. Lift up your hands towards the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We just take a while to call to mind and then to confess our sins. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault. In thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, our psalm set for today, as I said, page 609. We're reading Psalms 4, 5, and 6. Um, We'll just read them one following the other. Answer me when I call, O God, of my unrighteousness. When I was hard-pressed, you set me free. Be gracious to me now and hear my prayer. Sons of men, How long will you turn my glory to to my shame? How long will you love what is worthless and seek after lies? Know that the Lord has shown me his wonderful kindness. When I call to the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble and do no sin. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices that are right and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Who will show us any good? The light of your countenance, O Lord, has gone from us. Yet you have given my heart more gladness than they have when their corn when their corn wine and oil increase. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Hear my words, O Lord, give heed to my groaning, listen to my cry. You that are my King and my God. In the morning when I pray to you, surely you will hear my voice. At daybreak, I lay my prayers before you and look up. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor can any evil dwell with you. The boastful cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those that work mischief. Those who speak lies, you destroy. You abhor the treacherous, O Lord, and those are stained with blood. But because 
of your great goodness, I will come into your house. I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe and fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness, for my enemies lie in wait. Make straight your way before me, for there is no truth in their mouth, and, with, and within they are eaten up by their malice. Their throat is an opal sepulchre, and their tongue speaks smooth and flattering words. Destroy them, O God, let them fall by their own contriving. Cast them out for their many offences, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who put their trust in you rejoice. Let them shout with joy forever. Be the defender of those who love your name. Let them exult because of you. For you will bless, O Lord, the man that is righteous. You will cover him with your favor as with a shield. O Lord, rebuke me not in your indignation, nor chasten me in your fierce displeasure. Have mercy upon me, Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my very bones are afraid. My soul also is greatly troubled, and you, Lord, and you, Lord, how long will you delay? Turn again, O Lord, and deliver my soul. O save me for your mercy's sake. For in death no man remembers you, and who can give you thanks from the grave? I am weary with my groaning. Every night I drown my bed with weeping, and water my couch with my tears. My eyes waste away from sorrow. They grow dim because of all my enemies. Away from me all you that do evil, for the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. All my enemies shall be put to shame and greatly dismayed. They shall turn back and be confounded in a moment. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from Proverbs, chapter 27, verses 1 to 12. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Let another praise you, not your own mouth, someone else, and not your own lips. Stone is heavy and sand a burden, but provocation by a fool is heavier than both. Anger is cruel and fury overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Better is an open rebuke than a hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. He who is full loathes honey, but to the hungry even what is bitter tastes sweet. Like a bird that strays from its nest um, is a man who strays from his home. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of one's friend springs from his earnest counsel. Do not forsake your friend and the friend of your father, and do not go to your brother's house when disaster strikes you. Better a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. Be wise, my son, and bring joy to my heart. Then I can answer anyone who treats me with contempt. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and suffer for it. Now ends our first lesson. We say together now the song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on his lowly servant, and from this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. 
He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses uh, 1 to 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. Here ends our second lesson. In the beginning, the same words at the start of Genesis, in the beginning, I think John wrote that on purpose. He wrote that to draw people's attention or draw their minds back to Genesis. And he wanted to get people to understand that Christ was there with God in the beginning. Christ was not only there with God, he was God. He was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. He speaks of Christ as being the light to the world. And he speaks of John the Baptist as being the one who was preparing people so that they might recognize that light. Now we all speak often of Christ as being the light. At Easter Sunday, we, we light the Easter candle, and tradition is that we take the light from the candle into the church and light the candles of all the congregation from the Easter candle. We pass that light from one to another, and as we enter the church at different places, we say, Christ is the light. We say that as we give that light from the one candle to another, it doesn't diminish the first candle. So the light of Christ is one that can spread without being diminished. Now in the last couple of weeks we've had a lot of rain. And it just struck me as I was trying to prepare for this that during those overcast days, sometimes 
more overcast than other days. The light was very diffused and very subdued. We had days where, even though it was light, it was more like twilight. And then we had days where the clouds parted and the sun came streaming through and we had this bright, intense, beautiful light. And I believe that in our lives, and I speak for myself, in my life, there are days when the light of Christ seems like an overcast day. It seems pretty dim and not quite real. There are other days when the, Christ, the light of Christ seems to shine very, very brightly for me. And I'm sure that happens with you as well. And I'm sure that a lot of unbelievers, people who don't recognize Christ as the light, not the light of the sunlight, of course, but the light of our soul, the light of our, of our spiritual being. They don't recognize that because, because possibly it just doesn't make sense to them. It does sound a bit odd to speak in those terms, I suppose. It sounds more real to speak of Christ as a person as opposed to being a word. But the problem is that when you speak about Christ as being a person, people can't seem to grasp that that person is actually God. God made flesh, as John says. And I don't know how we can convince some people of that fact. I don't know how we can convince people of the fact that Jesus, a human, and let's not forget, some of them think that he was just a fictitious character, not actually a historical character. So how do we overcome those issues? I think the only way we can do it is to pray for them, is to pray that, that something in their lives would happen, not anything negative, that something in their lives would happen that they would come to realize Christ that they would come to realize that Christ is genuine that Christ is a reality not just a made up story all we can do is to pray we'll be coming up in the future for a um, a prayer, a prayer, um, few weeks called Thy Kingdom Come, where we'll be choosing people that we want to pray for, for them to come to know Christ. And I just pray that as we do that, the light will start shining in their lives. We often see when people get bright ideas in a comic strip, a little light bulb that goes on over their head. And I we just pray that those people that we are holding in prayer, that we are wanting to, to have them have a relationship with God, will have that little light bulb that goes on and see the light and understand the meaning of it. We say now the Song of Simeon. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and to the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We say the baptismal creed. I believe and trust in God the Father, who made the world. I believe and trust in his son Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord God, we ask you to give us your blessing. To your church holiness, to the world peace, to this nation justice, and to all people knowledge of your law. Keep safe our families, protect the weak, heal the sick, comfort the dying, and bring us all to a joyful resurrection. We ask these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for today. Holy God, on the Mount of Transfiguration, you revealed your Son as the Christ. Transform our lives in his image. Write your law of love on our hearts and make us prophets of your shining splendor through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. We say another colleague for peace. Eternal God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works proceed, give your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that free from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We pray this afternoon also for all those who are suffering from various illnesses. Our focus the last year has rightfully been on the coronavirus. It's been something that has really decimated our society. But we mustn't forget about all the other people. The people who are suffering with heart conditions, people who are suffering from cancer, people who have got broken bones, people who have got various other problems with them, liver diseases or kidney failure or a whole host of other things. I know it's very easy for us just to, to be so overwhelmed with this coronavirus that sometimes we forget about them. So we just pray for all the sick. We pray for all those who are suffering from whatever illness it is. We've seen the numbers um, of coronavirus victims decreasing slightly. The, uh, the new infections have been coming down a bit. And yet the number of people dying is still pretty high. And so we pray for the families of those people. We ask, Father God, if you would just give them comfort. It's extremely difficult to comfort people who have lost a loved one. It's difficult for us as humans to know what to say, because whatever we say somehow sounds hollow. And so we just pray that, that Christ will come to them, that his light and his warmth will envelop them, and that they will feel that love and that comfort that Christ can bring. We pray for all those who are suffering financially, all those who are homeless, all those who are hungry. We just pray that they too would find some way of making ends meet, of making things happen for them, that doors would open for them, that wallets would open for them that food would be distributed to, to the, the hungry and that shelter would be given to the homeless. And so we just pray, light now, darkness, Lord, and do your great mercies defend us in all the perils and dangers of the night. 
for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And then we say together, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. I hope you have a peaceful, restful night. And that tomorrow morning when you wake up, the light that you see will be the light of Christ, and it will be bright, bright sunlight and not an overcast day for you. Go in peace. Amen.